Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration. This week I will be inspired by Ray Hunter here on YouTube and once you're done watching my video make sure to go see how I inspired her. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, I am back with another Inspired Saturdays video. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, I like to stop by every few Saturdays and do a collaboration with another crafty YouTuber. I select a project they have created and use some portion of it to create a new project and they select a project of mine and do the same on their channel. For this week, I am collaborating with Ray of the Ray Hunter channel here on YouTube. I will have her channel linked below as well as the specific video that I'm taking inspiration from today. I'll tell you a little bit more about that though in a minute. If after watching this video you are a crafty YouTuber who is inspired to join me, I will link the video below that has the instructions on what's all needed for the collaboration and how you can apply. So make sure to check out that description box. For my inspiration today, I will be using the video where Ray created the card that you see on screen. I really liked that striped rainbow background and then that fun rainbow image on the front of it. I thought this would be a great card to use up some scraps of colored cardstock and it would give me a chance to use one of my new stamp and die sets. I hope that once you're done here, you'll go watch Ray's video, which is again linked below to see what I have made that inspired her. Once I start the process of today's card, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Before we get started on that process though, let me share with you some of the products I'll be using today. If I do add anything later, I will be sure to tell you. Like I mentioned earlier, the focal point of today's card will be this stamp and die set. I got this at Michael's and I have not used it yet so I thought this would be the perfect card to do it. I just love all of the little rainbow images and then they have some fun sentiments to go with them. My original plan was to stamp with Versamark and emboss with Detail Silver, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out now with my Detail Black embossing powder because I forgot that my matte was black, so I wanna go ahead and use that same color for the outline of my image. Now I like to emboss because that helps me stay in the lines when I color. Not sure about you, but it helps me. I got out some of my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I tried to pick colors that went with the cardstocks I had got. This is what I used to pick my colors. I just held my cardstocks up to my swatch guide here and then pulled that marker. The colors I pulled out for my image are 45 Pale Green, number 83 Lilac, number 25 Pink, number 21 Light Carmine, and number 42 turquoise green. I also got out my colorless blender. You'll see here in the background I have just some scraps of colored cardstock. I will be stamping and coloring on this scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I just find out that this blends the best with my markers. I got out a scrap of black cardstock, a piece of printer paper that I was going to recycle because it was already printed on, and somewhere here it is. I got out a white top fold card base. Let's get crafty. To get started on my card today, I'm gonna to be cutting each of my cardstock scraps into strips that are three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm gonna be using the three quarters of an inch mark to the left of my cutting line, just so I can hang on to the cardstock with my fingers while I cut. Once those were all trimmed down, I then cut each piece to five and three eighths inches tall or at least I thought I did. Stay tuned for that little mishap. Once I was done cutting the strips, I then cut my scrap of black cardstock to five and a half inches tall by four inches wide. 
Next, I brought in my piece of printer paper and I cut it so it was three and three quarters inches wide by five and three eighths inches tall. Once I had my pieces of cardstock arranged in the order that I wanted them on the card front, I started to place those onto that piece of printer paper. I put a couple of strips adhesive on the back of each piece and then I aligned that onto the white printer paper. And here's where I realized not all of my strips were 5 and 3 8 inches tall. I didn't know at the time what happened, but I got out my ruler and noticed that this piece was only 5 and a quarter. If you look here when I go to cut, I accidentally slide that down to the five and a quarter inch mark before I trim. But I decided not to let that stop me or redo that piece. I went ahead and continued to glue down each of the cardstock strips until I had them all in place. Then I pulled out my little Fiskars guillotine trimmer and just sliced off the excess on the end. There was also a little extra white at the top of the piece, so I just turned that around and trimmed that off as well. Make it work, people, and I will tell you now that this is just the beginning of the mishaps with this card. Stay tuned for the stamping. Just like with Ray's card, I'm going to be cutting this rainbow piece into two sections using an angled cut. I use that same little photo trimmer eyeballed a nice angle and then sliced that into two pieces. Before I moved on to the stamping, I wanted to start to put my card together. The first thing I did was put adhesive on the back of the larger rainbow piece and that got aligned and adhered at the top center of the black mat. The smaller piece got adhesive on the back as well and that got aligned at the bottom center of the black mat. Now you'll notice here that the opening in the middle if I would have cut all of my cardstock strips correctly earlier, the opening would have been the same as on the sides. So it is a little bit wider than I wanted it, but again, I am making it work, people. This piece got adhered to the card front, and now I'm ready to do my stamping, which get ready for a wild ride. I pulled out all the tools I would need to do my stamping. I'll be using the rainbow with the double clouds and the sentiment that says you brighten my life. I even remembered to prep my stamp area with my embossing buddy. So I inked up that stamped, pressed it nice and firmly onto my Strathmore Bristol Smooth and poured the black powder over it. This was when I was like, ooh, wow, that looks kind of bold or kind of wide. Now, these are cheaper stamps, and I'm used to lately using my like Gina K Design stamps, which are nice and solid. When you stamp these, they kind of smoosh out, and that is why this one was so bold. Now, I could have just deleted this footage and started over, you never would have known, but I decided to keep it in there. So I got ready for take number two. So my plan for take number two was to still get that stamp nice and juicy, but when I stamped it onto my cardstock, I was not going to press hard. I was pretty successful with that bit, but that's when I realized I did not prep my work surface, and after I poured my black powder on there, I did have some excess powder. Normally, I could bring in my little brush and wipe that away, but some of my excess powder was in the teeth, and I removed some of the teeth completely. So, time for take number three. And great news, third time was the charm. I remember to prep, I remember to get my stamp juicy, and I remember to stamp lightly. And the lines on this one were much better. Here's a close up look at both of them side by side, just to see the difference when I prep correctly, but I don't press too hard. Now it was time to stamp the sentiment, and good news, this one legit only took one take. I stamped it, added the powder, everything looked good, so I went ahead and heat set that. When I use my heat tool, I like to warm it up off camera for about 30 seconds and then bring it to my paper. I do start by heating up the back a little bit and then bringing it to the front and finish the melting. Now let's get the image and the sentiment colored up. I decided that I wanted my rainbow to go in the same order as my card, and because I only have four stripes on my rainbow, I took out the first or the darker pink. 
I am no pro at coloring, but I know that maybe coloring intimidates a lot of you. So I thought I will share with you my process of how I use these. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring in the first color and I colored in probably about a quarter of the way into each side of the rainbow with the first pink color. Then I bring in my colorless blender to start to pull some of that color out. I start about halfway into the section I just colored and when I have it pulled a little bit you'll notice that I go off to the right and get the color that goes onto the colorless blender and wipe that off. That way I'm not getting the image too dark and when I'm done I have a highlight in the middle. I then went over to the other side and did the same process. Once I have all of that done, I do wipe off my blender and I go back from both sides pulling all the way from the first color up to the center. Now again, this is what works for me. You might find something totally different. I know that all of us have just a little bit different ways of how we color, but I wanted to let you know my thoughts. I then use this same process for the other three colors in the rainbow. This part I have sped up for you, but I wanted to let you see it just in case you had any other questions or you were just interested in how I finished the rainbow. Once I had all of the stripes colored in, I wanted to add a little bit of the shading to the cloud. So I brought in number 302 Haze Blue and I went in and added a little bit around the edge of all of the clouds and anywhere where there were lines or I thought there would be a shadow. Once I had that placed down, I brought back in that colorless blender and just spread the color throughout the cloud. And here's a close up look for you. I'm not quite done with the coloring yet. I'm gonna be using those same markers to color in the word Brighton on the sentiment. There were eight letters in Brighton, so that worked perfectly with the four markers I had chosen. What I did was put a little bit of color on the top and bottom of each letter. I made sure to skip the correct amount, but I did use only one marker at a time. Once I had the color put in, I then brought in the colorless blender and pulled the color down from the top and up from the bottom. I just continued the same process for each of the letters until my sentiment was colored in as well. Now it was time to do the die cutting. I pulled out the rainbow die from the stamp set and then I pulled out this fishtail banner from my stash. I use Scotch Blue removable tape to hold my dies in place. Now I did get out a couple of fresh pieces for today, but once I'm done with these later, I do just set them to the side and I can reuse this. I wasn't able to get both of my dies on there at one time, so I die cut my rainbow and then I placed my banner die and I die cut the sentiment. Now that all of the die cutting was done, I started to figure out how I wanted to arrange my card. I decided that the top was a little bare, so I got out a stitch circle die and some vellum, and I cut one of those out to place behind the rainbow. This adds a little something else out there, and it helps the rainbow stand out from the striped background. I used some mini dimensionals from Stampin' Up! on the back of each of the die cut pieces, and I put those in place. When adhering the vellum circle, I made sure to only put adhesive where the rainbow would cover it up from the front. To finish the card off, I used some self-adhesive sequins and added five of those to the front of the card. This took me a while to decide where I wanted each of those to go, and you'll notice that when I thought I had it done, I actually ended up moving one, but here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I was inspired by Ray today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Ray's video. It's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.